Well, I mean, he got on transition, got two easy layups off of their transition offense. Um, so we got to do better with that. And then the uh, the corner three was, you know, part of our principles uh, on DJ's drive. And then, you know, he knocked it down. The coach was talking about how the starters are, you know, struggling right now. Does it does it feel mental, physical, collectively as a group, as a starting unit? What are you what are you feeling right now? Um, I mean, we just got to get stops. Obviously, we're not making shots as a unit. So um, when that happens, you got to rely on your defense. This, uh, this isn't the first time, though, in the fourth quarter where you guys are right there, slight lead, what have you. Um, have you noticed a commonality where in these fourth quarters it's kind of hard to put your foot down and close these games out? I mean, teams go on a little bit of a run. You know, they get up seven, something like that. And then, uh, you know, because we're not making shots, um, you know, it just becomes tough for us. You know, because uh, the, the shorter the time window, the harder it is to make up seven points. And uh, when you're not making shots, that's, that's kind of how it is. And then obviously we gave up a lot of second chance opportunities uh, when we did kind of start to make a couple shots to try to make it a little bit of a push. Um, Vucevic, Aaron Gord, you know, getting second chance points for them and getting them uh, extra buckets. Does it become a little bit of a mental thing when you go through a prolonged shooting slump like, like some of the guys have done? Um, I mean, I, I guess a shooting slump in general would all be mental, right? Because, you know, we're, we're professionals. We shoot every day. Uh, you know, it's some of the shooters in here are the best in the in the league. Joe, TP, GT, you know, just in terms of trends and historically, best, some of the best in the league. So, you know, you would it, – it's not physical. I mean, they've, they've – for their careers have – um, been the best shooters in the league, and so you know we believe that they're going to continue to be the best shooters in the league. You and Joe had 16 apiece, but the starters only scored 52. What do you think is happening with the offense in relation to the starters? Uh, we're just not making shots, man. Uh, that's why. That's why I see right now. Did you, uh, when you came out after half, did you personally make an effort to be more aggressive? I mean, I think you had like maybe three points or. What Three have you in the, at, in the first half? And then in the third quarter, uh, you clearly spurred the comeback. Were you making an effort to be more aggressive, or was that just the way the game was? Uh, I mean, a little bit of both. The game was slowing that way, but then also, obviously, we were down, so we want to come back. I mean, you know, as was one of the, the guys on the team as of right now, you know, it's your job to try to do what it takes to win, and I'm just trying to do what it takes to win. When you play shorthanded for such a long time, though, does that start to take a toll on on people? Um, if anything, it means that we should be settling to a rhythm. Um, instead of letting it take a toll, we should be like, hey, this is what we've got. You know, I'd see if it was like a five-game stretch or something, and it was like, oh, man, game five, it really took a toll because the first four, we were doing it this way, and then game five was hard, and, you know, but now everybody's back, so we go back to the way we play. But, I mean, we're going on, like, 20 games or something like that. Like, it's, it, that's, that's a quarter of the season. Like, it's, we, we have to settle into a rhythm of who we are and how we're going to play night in and night out. Um, that's, that's just what it is. And, and what was the technical about the first half? <laughs> I euroed Nikola Vucevic and he hit me in the face. So when we came back down, I got the rebound and I turned around and I said, he hit me in the face. A lot of my texts this year have not have not come with cuss words, have not come with anything. It's been it's been what? Or hit me in the face. Or are you serious? It's been stuff like that and I get technical fouls. So, you know, um I don't know if they're appealed. I'm assuming they take it out the check or whatever. Um I'll talk to my business managers about that, and I'll talk to the Players Association about appealing it, hopefully, and get some money back. But at the end of the day, you know, if, if people are hurt by me saying he hit me in the face when he hit me in the face, yeah, I, the yeah I mean, he, I didn't personally attack him. You can, you can look at the replay and, and see, like, I drove, I euroed, he hit me in the face. Obviously, I wasn't happy because he hit me in the face. Like, that's – if I hit you in the face, I'm sure you probably – wouldn't like it either. A lot of guys in the locker room have been in this situation before, especially guys that were on the team a season ago. What's, what's the key to sticking together through stretches like this that happen over the course of a season? Um, just understand who we are. I mean, obviously, uh, while we were playing extremely well, um, there was no way that we were probably going to you know, keep that up when we were like 6-1 and one or something like that. I mean, that would have made us the Milwaukee Bucks or something. So, uh, you know, just, just understand that the season ebbs and flows. You know, we could very well, just like last year, go on a 7-0 run, right? And then everybody's going to say, oh, we're one of the best teams in the league. We're going to be back over 500, all that other stuff. So, you know, it's just about 
sticking to it, hammering away at the at, at the stone, and eventually the stone breaks. You know, it's, it's not going to be the, the first time you swing. It's going to be one of the subsequent times.